Now we move on to marriage. Congratulations to the 10% of you that won the gene pool lottery. Now, Princess 49er recognized that you exist. Achievement unlocked, or is it? Let's go over this achievement that's been unlocked for the 10% of you. Do you require being that 1% that she expects out of that 10% of you? Okay, so far, you're over six feet tall, check. She now knows that you exist. And what I mean by a 49er? Well, a 49er is a four who thinks she's a nine. But anyway, let's pack, go back to Her Royal Highness's list of demands on what you need to be to qualify to date her before getting married. Okay, six feet tall. We already checked that. Do you have the um, six-figure, seven-figure income? Mm, that might be important, so... We'll just check that as a yes for now. Do you have your own house? And not just any house. Is it a mansion? And not a McMansion. A real mansion. And do you have two kinds of these cars that's required? It needs to be expensive and brand new. And you have zero debt. Because everything you own is bought and paid for. Do you have military background? I remember one dating profile, actually, she actually listed, do you actually have a military background? So I'm thinking to myself, what, are you going to battle or something? What are, or him, maybe? But anyways, yeah, military background, let's just throw that in there. Are you a self-made millionaire, an entrepreneur, own a business? In other words, have all your ducks in a row and got your shit completely together. Just to name a few off that really high list of demands that you must require to be with her. Now, let's go over her list. Even though she didn't list it, we could all figure out what that might be. Right, guys? So what does she bring to the table? Oh, that's right. She said that she is the table. Well, she might be correct there. I mean, she's big enough for you to throw a tablecloth on her and stack plates on her flat ass. What she might actually bring to the table, per se, her high body count with maybe five or six abortions in the mix, both arms full of tattoos and enough body piercings on her face that she looks like she fell face first into a tackle box, pink, blue, or purple hair that's cut real short. In other words, she is rocking that I hate my dad look. Three or four kids from three or four different baby daddies. But that does not matter. Because you, as a high-quality man, you should look at this woman and go, Oh, boy, where do I sign up? And her highness would say, Oh, right here, because you need to man up and take in charge of my low-quality ass. Guys, you could thank feminism for this. This is pretty much all of them that are on dating apps. Right off the bat, the requirements is you need to be over six feet tall. So already, she already filtered out most of the good quality men that would actually give her a good life. Although there's some exceptions. If you're not over six feet tall, you should at least have a criminal record, you know, with a bunch of tattoos all over your face. You know, being a convicted murderer. You know, that's, that's very appealing to them. If you got a criminal record, convicted murderer, tattoos all over your face, tattoos all over your arms, body piercings, they'll be, they'll just jump right on a bed and spread their legs going, oh my God, have my babies. And it's not just the United States that's like this. They got some other countries out there that are going through the same thing. Take South Korea for an example. The women over there are so awful that, well, the men over there just ain't fucking. So they're trying to make it mandatory for them to get with a woman just so their population won't die down. That's pretty bad if it gets to that point. And a good bit of that is happening all around. They got some places out there where you could actually find a traditional uh, woman that would, you know, give you the same life that your grandparents had, your grandfather had, your dad had maybe. They're becoming what is being known as Passport bros. They're getting a passport. They're leaving the West. 
the United States, and they go into some place like the Philippines to actually find a traditional woman, one that has not been brainwashed by feminism. Most of them are not even coming back to the United States. They leave, they start a whole new life over there in the Philippines. They couldn't be happier. And what's funny about that is a lot of women down here are complaining about that. I'm like thinking, why are you complaining? These are the guys you threw away. These are the guys you had no interest in. These are the guys that were under six feet tall. Why would you care where they go? Lots of these women, for the most part, they love misery. So they love to see people suffer. Even when they don't want to have nothing to do with them, they want to see them suffer anyways. Most of us just look at this like, well, you won't give this guy the time of day anyway, so why would you care? You're too busy riding a cock carousel of every Chad, Tyrone, and Steven Sales out there. Why would you give a shit where he's going? But they have videos of these passport bros on YouTube, and they couldn't have been happier. And they can't stand that. Now, what these women want, they want to reject you and then watch you just go into misery. Because, like I said many times before, misery loves company. I mentioned this also, TikTok is another one. TikTok was a bad idea, especially when it comes to dating advice or finding someone in your life. The people that upload videos over there, they just give the complete terrible device. I mean, uh, terrible advice. I can't even talk anymore. Just god-awful dating advice. Most of them get on there and talk about how bad, you know, they were as a parent. Because if you give these women enough time, they'll eventually rat on themselves. And they'll tell you exactly why their marriage has failed. And women won't say this up front. They'll say this a couple of videos down the line. Because women see accountability as kryptonite. So they'll blame the man for everything up front. All of it. Until it gets to the point where eventually she'll tell on herself. That she's the real problem why the marriage failed. There's many videos on TikTok about this. They start out by saying, oh, I am living my life, girl. You know, I'm, I found my happiness. I had to go out and find myself. Not giving two shits about how bad she hurt her ex-husband. Then later on, she'll upload another video of her crying, going, I'm so lonely. Oh, I'm so lonely. No one will talk to me. No one will date me. I'm thinking to myself, well, you put this on yourself. And what really upsets them is when the man starts over and finds a younger, hotter version of her. That really pisses her off. I mean, it really pisses them off. I don't know why I can't talk. But... So you see all these videos of them crying in their car about the fact that they have found themselves, they couldn't have been more happy, or only to find out that, well, they're miserable. And what really stuns me is that other women watch this, they do the same thing, thinking they're going to get a different result. When they don't, they get the same results. It's just mind-boggling. If you're smart, you would watch these videos and think, well... I don't want this to happen to me, so maybe I should not go the same route that she did. No, they're going to follow suit. They're going, oh, girl, you know exactly what's up. I'm going to find my happiness, too. Only to find out that she's going to turn out the same way that she did. You're posting videos out in public in front of a bunch of strangers. You know who's also watching these videos? Men. Men are watching these videos. And they're looking at this shit and they're going... Well, fuck it. Why should I go out there, better myself, and do everything correct when this is probably going to happen to me? Because most of these women leave good men. Because they always think that the grass is greener on the other side. Only to find out that they're sadly mistaken because if they've been in a marriage for over 30 plus years, guess what? She's in her 40s, early 50s. And thinking that she could go out there and ride the cock carousel like she did when she was in her early 20s. She can't. 
And then she realizes this, and reality kicks in, and then she just makes all these videos of her crying by herself in her car that she threw everything away, and life is just so unfair. Bitch, you did this to yourself, and nobody should feel sorry for any of them. You made your bed, sleep in it, it is what it is. This is the main reason why I'm still single. I'm 47, so I'm not even looking anymore. I'm almost 50. I gave myself until I was 35 to find someone to settle down with and have kids. Because, yeah, I wanted to have kids and become a dad and, you know, do the things that dads normally do with their kids, their son and daughter. I wanted to see them have a, a much better life than they did. So I gave it until I was 35. If I didn't have anybody by the time I was 35, I was just going to let that ship sail. And that's just what I did. And when I look back, I made the correct decision. The perfect decision. Damn, I can't talk. What the fuck is wrong with me? And that's why I do things that make me happy. Like my hobbies, for an example. And what I'm doing here on video. This is one of the dreams that I've been wanting to do, too. I always wanted to become a voice actor at some point. But I was born in the wrong state, so that didn't happen. So this is the closest thing to it. I have my own character that, you know, I've designed. Well, this is a leggy fox that was painted into my uh, character with the color markings. So this is somewhat a dream that I'm living, is throwing a voice on a character. And that's why I do the things that I do. Don't need anybody's permission to do them. I just do things for myself and do things for me. It's what I want to do. So I do them. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about it. This or my hobbies. I do things my way. That's what me and Frank Sinatra have in common. I do it my way. I did give it the old college try, as they say. I bought my first house when I was 23 years old. It was in August 4th of 1999. And I lost it on August 28th of 2005. So I lived there exactly six years. So I did have a house, not an apartment, a house. My first house was three bedrooms, one bath. It had a built-in pool. And it had a, a bathroom outside. That way you don't have to track water from the pool inside the house. So I was already living like a king at 23 years old. But I busted my ass getting all that shit. I was working on dump trucks and heavy equipment, putting in a lot of overtime, burning my candle from both ends. Barely got any sleep, but I went out there and I bust my ass and got it. So I did try to make it work. I started dating this one girl one time. Well, I was 28 years old. She was 31. But this was in uh, 2005. I'm not picky. No, I'm not picky on what she looks like. All I really want out of a woman is, well... A sensible human being. Someone that I could talk to. You know, to have a lifelong friend like my grandparents and my parents had. That's the life I was looking for. I didn't just want someone just so I could fuck. I mean, I could go just about anywhere to fuck. No, she just had to be a pleasant person to be around. So it was a blind date. And it didn't work out. And the reason why it didn't work out is, well, there was a lot of things that she done that really rubbed me the wrong way and turned me off. For one thing, she wanted to have sex on the first date. And I'm like, whoa, I don't think I have a girlfriend. I think I picked up a whore. Because I'm pretty sure I'm not the first one she'd done this to or axed. And she was disappointed when she saw me, which I kind of expected. I mean, I'm, I'm a minus three. I'm an ugly motherfucker. I get that. But no, it was the color of my eyes. Yeah, my eyes are brown in real life, not blue. She wanted her babies to have blue eyes. So I'm already thinking, okay, I'm dating someone that hates me already. Nice. So I didn't make a scene. I just stopped contacting her and walked away. I don't like to make scenes. I don't like drama. I just, if it doesn't work out, I just stop calling and just walk away. Then you had Hurricane Katrina that came, and that house got destroyed. But I didn't give up. I was thinking, okay, I'm now almost 30. 
So the next house I'm going to get, it's going to be an even bigger house. Because the first house that I had, I had both homeowners and flood insurance on it. So I was able to go and give me a nice, decent-sized four-bedroom house with two full baths and a nice big living room, a big kit, well, a big dining room, and a kitchen. Nice, nice size kitchen that tied into the dining room with a uh, with a little bar table type of deal. Nice big backyard. Because I said, hey, you know, I mean, there's a good chance that I might find someone to settle down with and have kids with. But unfortunately, my health turned took a turn for the worst. When I was 31 years old, that was my last year that I was completely healthy. I started having blood pressure problems, and that led on to kidney failure and cancer. So. At 35, I couldn't go back to work because I've been out for so long, so I had to turn around and put my house up for sale, even after I already redone the bathrooms in the kitchen because I was in the process of remodeling that house at the time. So then I was, so that's when I broke it off. I'm thinking, okay, now my health is shot. I'm not healthy anymore. My immune system's down to 33%. So I just gave up on dating and trying to find a wife. So I'll let that ship sail because I'm, I just don't have the strength for it no more. Now that I'm almost 50, I don't even want to do it. I guess things happen for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. So to all the men out there that got rejected because they're not over six feet tall, don't think of it as a, um, as a loss. Think of it as a win. Think of it as a blessing. Think of it as a way that she decided to make somebody else's life miserable instead of yours. Because marriages these days, they ain't worth a fuck. Especially with millennials. There's a saying that goes around. They say, what do you call a millennial that's been married for four years? A new record. 